Hello. Hello, hello, hello. So once again, with another spectacular photographer who's very special in many ways. Yeah. What do you think, Hermi? Yes, an amazing talent from Pakistan. We would like to introduce you to an extremely talented photojournalist, Mubin Ansari. This photojournalist, artist, filmmaker is a phenomenon for Pakistan. He is changing the way we view minorities and religious tolerance. His book, White in the Flag, is endorsed by the current Prime Minister Imran Khan as well. Mubin is hearing impaired and he sees the world differently. It's one of the reasons why his captures are extremely offbeat. Let's bring him, Nisha. Yes. Hi, Mubin. Hi, Mubin. Hi, Nisha. Hi, Hermit. Thank you so much for giving us some time. We know that you are extremely busy with different shoots and different projects. And thank you so much on behalf of Post Trails and on behalf of our audience to be a part of this, of, you know, for be a part of this webinar. Thank you very much for having me on this. It's a pleasure and uh, it was wonderful meeting you guys when I went for my first exhibition in uh, Dubai and Sharjah two years yes. ago. And uh, you guys are doing truly wonderful work and uh, I'm just excited to be here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. In fact, and we are we, really, I don't know, some connection. I think there is some technical connection issues. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the network is bit of problem so we need to give him some time to join us back so that's the he's story back, he's back he's back yes yeah yeah, Sorry. <laughs> yeah. i'm back there yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah so can you can you just tell us how you started photography what was the inspiration or something that to begin with yeah so uh photography is something that i eat breathe drink uh, it's literally really really a part of me uh, more than photography it is my love for art that I have always been very passionate about uh, so I'll give you a little bit of a background story about me so I'm going to get a bit personal about this uh, so when I was three weeks old I had a severe case of meningitis due to which I lost my hearing and I think but that allowed me to see better you know that allowed me to observe better and I used to be a big uh, X-Files and wrestling fan. So I used to collect action figures and used to uh, customize them. And so that's how it started. And, but you know, at that time, you see, you see my hearing aid right now, that's my hearing aid today. And this fits right into my ear. Yeah. But, but about 25, 30 years ago, hearing aid used to be very big. And were, I used to be very conscious about it. I used to be very self-conscious about how I used to look. And so everybody used to ask me, you know, what you're doing, what are you wearing? So, you know, my parents and I used to say I'm wearing the bottom of a special radio. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I was always very introverted. And mm. it was photography that actually broke me out into the real world. I continue to do so today. Uh, so in high school, the first digital camera had just come out. And so uh, that was the Kodak, I believe. And I used to take pictures of everybody, from my teacher to my friends, to school building, to my friends getting late for school. And it led to an annual monthly magazine. And so I became the pictorial historian of the school. That was the very first award that I got. And so I would communicate through that. Otherwise, I was the kid that nobody knew. And I was the kid that um, who preferred not to talk to anybody. So photography was something that um, helped me understand people, helped me capture people. Uh, and so one day there was a classmate of mine who got into a big brawl, uh, some fight. Um, I don't know, some there was some girlfriend issue or something. Uh, mm -hmm. That was ages ago. Uh, so he apparently lost the fight. And in utter humiliation, he stormed up into the basketball court to cry, to let out his emotions. Uh, and he did not know that I was also in the basketball court taking pictures. And uh, so I had two options. 
if i should let the moment pass or if i should uh, capture this moment uh, fortunately i decided to capture this moment <laughs> and i still have that picture so i used that to blackmail him uh, you know you remember what happened your friend <laughs> here because so i developed a connection with a raw human emotion uh, so you know that um, uh, that part of career went on uh, to my college and con- continue to do to today I reinvent myself as a photographer, so that's how photography started. Um, so I talk a little bit about that in my uh, visual presentation because it goes even way before then. Yeah. Great. So shall shall yeah. we start with the presentation? Absolutely. Uh, well, if, uh, if I can actually just start sharing my work, I'm going to start boring everybody with my visual. <laughs> it's going to be an experience for all of us yeah okay there you all are waiting there to see go. that magical frames <laughs> there and go. with with the things which we have seen in dubai that is definitely amazing collection yeah. you have yeah we, we were lucky Thank enough you. to see it on a big screen like big uh, wall printed big, big printed canvas and yeah. we were really lucky enough to see this guy <laughs> in real we spent some time with him <laughs> in dubai well, Okay, so I'm just sharing the screen now. Yeah. Uh, here goes. Okay, so uh, so far you can see this uh, PowerPoint slideshow. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that's my uh, general work, as you can see, and I just put all of it together as a form of introduction. And uh, so I had just talked about how. Uh, photography had been there with me since um, you know i was a teenager but it was way before then so this photograph is of my grandmother uh, my dear grandmother who was an artist and um, she was an incredible incredible person so she was a photographer uh, by hobby as well and so she is taking a picture of herself and three of her sisters in front of a uh, mirror and uh, so you can see uh, you know how she's still being very artistic and when she migrated from india to pakistan uh, you know in 1948 she took a picture of the karachi port capturing this historical oh. moment now this is a very small frame very small like maybe just yeah. one uh, two by two by two inches and just in that little imagery there's so much history and i was always very inspired uh fast forward to 1998 uh, a few years before i picked up the camera um uh my father took me to the northern area and there he took a, a few pictures with a film camera rotated around and uh, just uh, captured everything and came back and stitched together a panorama so now i talk about my photographs So, uh, can I, uh, everybody see the photograph yes. of the mountain? Yes. So, this is the very first photograph uh, that I fell in love with, that I felt um, assured of myself as a photographer. So, this is Nanga Parbat, uh, translating to Naked Mountain. This is also known as the Killer Mountain. Uh, this is the second highest mountain in Pakistan and I believe uh, sixth in the world. Uh, and a lot of people have attempted to scale it. So I remember I went to the base camp trip uh, in 2010, which was my first ever expedition. And it was during the night time and it was full moon. And so I put on my zoom lens. I was using, uh, I think, a Nikon D70. And so I put a zoom lens on. I couldn't see anything with a naked eye. So I just zoomed and I focused. And uh, the first few times the image came up blood. But uh, after a few more tries, the image finally came out good. And uh, I was so excited that I jumped in excitement and I, um, you know, just slipped down uh, into the marshes. But uh, that was the word celebration. And <laughs> this, this uh, photograph also got featured on National Geographic Your Shot as well, uh, which okay. I'm uh, very uh, happy about. And um, so that I think started my career. And my love for landscape photography. Great. Great. And so uh, 
you know, across the Gilgit Baltistan and North Pakistan, uh, I go maybe three times a year. And each time I go, I find story in every nook and cranny. And the ship just happened to be passing through. And uh, I just uh, captured this moment. I just wanted to capture the door. But somehow the door swung open and the ship came by uh, with a shepherd not far behind them. And it was during the early days of apricot blossom. So hence the colors uh, are, uh, you know, early pink. Yeah. And this is one of my most uh, favorite places. This is in uh, Upper Honza. And this is known as Pachu Cathedrals. And uh, they, they call it that. And, you know, every time I look at it, uh, it for me, it's like a piece of meditation. It's a mountain standing tall in every weather and uh, showing its might and strength. And so for me, the mountains represent strength as well as grace. And so I continue to photograph it over every season. And so, uh, so I just uh, photographed it during uh, apricot blossom. And um, what I did was that um, I just took this photo of uh, this uh, cow hut during apricot blossom, and then I again photographed it uh, during autumn during this time. Uh -huh. Wow. And so I thought so the concept of time was something that I was always very uh, fascinated with. And um, so the same place led to this garden. This is a 400 years old garden and this photograph is very close to my heart. Uh, I took this photograph in 2016 and uh, what I did was uh, I posted this on my Facebook. And a friend of mine asked me to post it on her Facebook wall. And when I asked her why, so she said, um, you know, uh, because uh, I have stage three cancer. And, you know, this photograph gives me hope. That's what she said, you know, uh, that um, if she lives, she can see this place. But if she does not live, uh, but if she does not live, so, um, so, pa, can you guys see me and hear me? Uh, yeah. I, we can hear you, but we cannot see you. Okay. So, um, so over here, you can see different uh, forestry. Um, so, do you know, the, my friend told me that that photograph gave her hope and strength to do this. So now, uh, can you see the photograph of the mountain? Yes. Of the forest? Yes. The forest, yes. Okay. So, uh, sorry, I'm just making sure I'm, I'm still there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, I have always been very inspired by different uh, sources of pop culture. Uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, uh, Harry Potter, and lots of things. So I was very inspired by the folklore of fairy tales. Wow. So then I would photograph uh, lots of things happening in the woods as well. And so this is a photograph uh, that I took last year, uh, also in Hunza. And I decided to try a little bit of uh, a Salvador Dali style of imaging. Uh, mm -hmm. So so basically, um, you know, I studied as a painter. I'm not exactly a qualified photographer per se. Uh, and so um, I just uh, wanted to, to capture the painterly image of it. So whenever I take photographs of uh, um, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, you know, landscape and people are trying to take it as if it's a painting. Yeah. Yes. And so I wanted to show like, uh, almost as if the mountain was being illuminated by the moon. Oh, that's beautiful. That is a moonlight. Uh, yeah. So, so, you know, I decided to go there in every weather. And so this, uh, this photograph was taken three months ago. And it was the most incredible, incredible journey of my life because, you know, uh, as a photographer, uh, I realized that white comes in different shades. Yes. And so I would go inside the glaciers and I would discover all these incredible caves. And I asked my fellow mountaineer to jump across the crevice. Uh, probably a dangerous thing to do, but, uh, uh, you know, he enjoyed it. He was very willing. Uh, and as he says, you got a profile picture. Oh, this is spectacular. <laughs> so, uh, it, yeah, I mean, it was pretty slippery. So, this was my recent trip. Um, and 
so then I would also uh, find a lot of wildlife uh, during the winter. So you see, you would see a lot of yak, and then you yes. would see the um, you know the yaks are incredible, incredible animals. I mean, uh, I myself was struggling with climbing, uh, with trekking, but these guys obviously were in their natural habitat. But I was so fascinated with how they were managing to the steep slopes uh, in minus fifteen degrees. And then I would see the ibex uh, coming down. I yeah, can see the photograph of the three ibex. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, to the cup down and uh, you know, uh, uh, do the, the feeding. And I would see so much happening in the winter with the animals as well as human beings. So, this is a very interesting story. Um, you know, earlier I mentioned to you how I'm inspired by. Um, pop culture, I'm inspired by, uh, uh, you know, lots of different allegories and lots of different stories. So there's a story of this village. Um, it is near Afghanistan. This is uh, where Hunza leads into Afghanistan. And so this is a village where some many hundreds of years ago, um, uh, there was a wedding going on. And apparently this village had a folklore of being too extravagant or something. Um, and this man came dressed as a beggar and he uh, he roamed through the village and he asked for money and for food. Uh, but what happened was that everybody rejected him. So he went to this small cave where an old lady used to live. She was very kind and she gave him a food. Uh, she gave him uh, and everything that she had. And he told her that next day a flood would come and that uh, she needed to stay safe there. So she was protected. It seems mm. that the entire village was wiped out, but she was protected. That's how the story goes. So whenever I go to these old places, I try to bring out the folklore and I try to imagine how it must have looked since then. So, oh. uh, this, so this is a fellow traveler who built a fire there. It was minus 20, minus 25 degrees. So I wanted to reignite the history. That's nice. And so, um, you know, the temperatures are so cold, so severe that, um, you know, you can actually uh, see that, that, you know, how they have to actually collect, the locals have to collect uh, water from, from the river, from the frozen river. Uh, you can't use the bathroom because uh, the water pipes are clogged, they're frozen. So they have to, uh, have to break the, the ice and get collect water from the walk two kilometers every uh every day Ooh. and then you see which is like the water collection going on that's a tough life right so um and then you know i would love photographing uh, the stars and uh, that's an essential part of the northern area since the skies are so clear and yeah. i also take a lot of inspiration from music so when I was taking this picture, uh, I was taking a lot of uh, inspiration from uh, a David Bowie's song called Lazarus. Mm -hmm. So can you see the portrait so far? Yes. 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 So this is uh, this is Bibi Kai, and uh, so this is a very famous place in the Kalash Valley, and they're a very indigenous community. And I remember when I went in 2012, uh, about nine years back. Uh, this was my first time there. I went online and I just simply Googled Kalash woman and her photograph popped up everywhere. And so um, I took a printout and I went to Kalash Valley and I showed the photograph to a villager who uh, introduced me to her and I took her picture. I took this picture in 2012. And over the next four years, I continued to photograph her. And that was her in 2016. Oh, wow. Thank you. So, uh, you know, over the years uh, that I photographed her, uh, not once I was able to understand what she was saying or what I was saying to uh, to her because we didn't speak the same language. But the power of photography binded us together. And mm -hmm. uh, you can see us in 2012 and 2016. And uh, she adopted me as her grandson. <laughs> and so photography transcended, uh, you know, all language barriers. And, uh, you know, that it it made, it 
it's made me so many friends and uh, you know people who I cherish to have in my life. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and so, uh, so that uh, program I took in also in northern areas, and you know I was also inspired by this uh, uh, painting as well. So you can see how both the references go. So every time I see something, I try to adapt it as well. Beautiful. And uh, so far, I've talked to you about the north. I'm now going to tell you about the south, going from the mountains to the desert. And uh, so this was a very, somehow a very sacred sort of a mountain. Uh, um, somebody built a shrine on top of it, and you know, just uh, got buried there. So I found it very interesting. Uh, I took this picture during early morning. Early morning is my favorite, favorite time to take photographs of landscape. And I will tell you about that as part of my technique. And uh, so the port, the Dravar port, this is a very uh, ancient port in South Pakistan. And I absolutely love photographing the tone along with the sunset. Wonderful. Yeah. And, and uh, so over there, I would continue to photograph a lot of folklore stories. And I would photograph this, uh, you know, the queen of the desert. So there was a pipe reader. And uh, so, um, you know, there's so many stories there. That's the kind of place where time stopped completely. Uh, I just went there last week for an assignment. And uh, it, it's just one of my most favorite places to photograph. And now I just tell you about how I, uh, you know, do the photographic technique. This is not the same photograph edited, by the way. Uh, so the photograph on the left is, uh, both the photographs, by the way, are of Mohenjo Daro, which is a staple of the ancient Harappa civilization. And so the photograph on the left was taken during sunset. And this was taken, by the way, three, three days ago. And I wanted to go uh, again during sunrise. So I went the very next day, captured the same angle during sunrise on the left, because the sky was clearer. You're getting a beautiful play of shadows coming from the uh, come up to comes from the back. Uh, and I wanted to photograph it as suits of passage, signs of time. And I have always believed that you had to go an extra mile as a photographer to uh, to truly capture uh, you know the essence of it. And um, so that's uh, what I tried to capture during dawn. And so um, I'll now talk to you about my favorite photograph and how I try to uh, tell stories of the places as seen to my perspective. So this is a very old town. Somebody on Instagram messaged me. And uh, so um, I went there uh, to this place called Hadro. Uh, it's near the capital city of Islamabad. And I was taking pictures of old buildings. And my guide told me that there is this wooden library that I must check out. And so I went there and I decided to go there again. Uh, that this was inside, by the way. So you can see how many books there are. So if I can yeah. see the images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So uh, so I decided to check it out. And uh, but you know, I was so fascinated. The owner, uh, uh, Rachid Alizai, he unfortunately passed away uh, last year. Uh, he very kindly allowed me to photograph the library again. This time, I decided to take some candles with me and decided to recreate Harry Potter. Uh, I know this looks like a fire hazard, but I took some experts along and lots of permission to make mm -hmm. sure everything would go fine. And here he is uh, reading at 600 years old handwritten uh, copy of the Quran, the Muslim holy book. And you know, and he had all these religious and philosophical books uh, in his library. And I really enjoyed capturing that. So I tried to recreate time a lot through fire, uh, through different lighting by going the extra mile to tell the story. And so this is a very famous mosque in um, Lahore. And uh, this is Vajir Khan Moth. And this is the very first photograph that I took with a kit lens, 18 to 70 millimeters. Um, and they were during sunrise, by the way. Uh, so, but I would keep taking pictures of the same place over the years. So this was the photograph that I took of the prayers inside using a wide lens. And I spent eight years taking pictures of it using a wide lens. And so, uh, but um, I think I was missing something. 
So I decided to go again last year, but this time I decided to use a zoom lens. Uh, you know, my idea has always been to try and travel back in time. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, so that, so that's uh, my uh, that's my presentation, and uh, so. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I think we have yeah, a your video. Video is stuck. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're back. Yeah. Uh, you're back and you're gone. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I think um, so. Um, my uh, we, can, can you hear me so far? We, we can't we see can you. We can hear you. We cannot yeah. see you. Yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm going to log in from my mobile phone because uh, my laptop webcam has stopped, uh, but I'm right okay. here. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but you can keep the questions coming. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so that was Adin Ansari and his fabulous images of landscape and then some travel aspect to it and if you are asking me some images especially of that seeing the nature through certain windows and doors that looks so amazing it's uh, definitely taking you to that more, particular a lot place. of pictures we have seen it in the exhibition over here yes i i still remember the those images the colors and the yeah. tint in that place and you know you 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 yeah, can definitely I, i've take noticed it. that his the the colors in his pictures are really and the frame uh, yeah yeah making the frames more magical yes i i hope uh, mobin is going to be back soon and yes we have a lot of appreciation yeah, for his works work and you know it's uh, it his courage to come out of that shell is what we all need to appreciate you know we yeah, all really. try to be ourselves in in a shell in different ways as a human but not everybody have that courage to come out of it and to prove in forget about proving in front of others but to be bold in front of yourself and and he's not just a photographer he's also a filmmaker and he has directed and produced two documentaries also and the first film uh, hell hall was released in 2016 and the second film lady of emerald scarf that was mm -hmm. released in 2018 so that's great a multi talented artist and an artist yeah <laughs> yeah and an artist that is so visible in his frames you know you can definitely see it in his frames that he is an artist yeah yeah and it's such a pleasure to see people like this back. yeah and i'm back yes welcome, welcome back. back you we were just yeah, talking about, about your we were just talking about your documentaries that you produced and directed yeah yeah gone again yeah the internet connection where he is is kind of giving him a bit of trouble so please bear with us yeah yeah so he, thank he you everybody he managed to get a good connection than yesterday yesterday we were yes. testing and it was very bad yeah he's here <laughs> we have a question yeah. can you see yeah i uh, can hear and see you all now yeah, yeah. can you see the question over here on on the screen itself but he is using a mobile i'm not sure whether he can see it okay we have a question i would like like to know how he feels his work has evolved from the beginning till now yeah, yeah. so uh since Mobin, the internet Mobin. is giving you trouble. Yeah, we can't hear. Yeah, it's been. I'm. I'm really happy that he managed to finish the presentation. <coughs> presentation. Yeah. I have a pretty bad cough. Sorry. <laughs> 
I'm taking medicines. But yeah, the good part is he managed to finish the presentation and we were struggling with his internet connection for the last two days. We wanted to do how it works. Uh, uh, it was a problem. But let's hope he's, he will be able to yeah, join us back. Comment from Dilip. Handsome man. John Lennon look alike. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, he looked like a saint, in fact, uh, and he talked like a saint when you see him in real life. Uh, a very humble guy, uh, very yeah. down to earth and very helpful. Okay, that's what our experience with uh, Mobin. A very good person. <laughs> Great. We hope to hear from him. Uh, a little more yeah, a little more <laughs> let's let's wait for some time <coughs> excuse me sorry it's not covid i have an allergy issue when it is <laughs> when the weather is changing none of us trust hot. you now <laughs> <laughs> it's not covid it's only dry cough and it is dry cough i think it is the weather and you should uh Make sure that you're not giving it to the animals, the COVID. I'm not going out these days. I'm sitting inside and working so the animals are safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but let's hope Mobin is going to be back. Uh, but then thank you all. We see a lot of messages from uh, a lot of people over here. Yeah, he's, he's trying to connect once more. OK. And uh, yeah, <laughs> for those, you know, it's uh, certain pictures makes you feel like it's it's it it is just like paintings. It's so hard to believe that there are places like this on our planet. <laughs> I think we should be fine now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So far, can you see me now? We can see you. Okay. So far. Sounds good. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I mean, the only camera I really look after is my Nikon. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine. Nikon is always trustworthy. Yeah. The how to, to, I think the first question I think you asked was how had my work evolved over time, right? Yes. Uh, so I think uh, I, uh, I'm still you know, reading. Uh, uh, Mobin, I'm sorry, but it's again your connection, it's again a problem. No, I'm sorry that, yeah, it's, it looks like uh, Mobin's internet connection is struggling. Yeah. <laughs> Let him try to connect it once more. Yeah, I think, um, I think uh, we can wrap up the session and maybe, uh, yeah. Once one, when we will have one more session with him when he have a bet, we'll, we'll be constantly in touch with him to check whether when yeah. we can get into a better connection and we can do it once again. Yes, and the questions that we will take the questions and he will respond to you uh, in either in the YouTube or uh, on Facebook, Facebook page. Yeah. Yes. So that's it for now. So we had an interesting session. It was short and sweet today's session. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and it was a you know it, very it inspiring, was one... inspiring session as well. Yes. We have a comment yeah, from, it, it, uh, I feel Chamin. bad that, you know, it Mubin, is, your pictures speak a hundred words. And I love the fact that you try and dig out local stories and myths you uh, to accompany your photos. Keep up the, keep us the good work. We are proud of you and your work. We have a couple of questions also. So we will answer it later. Uh, Mubin will answer it on the Facebook or on YouTube. Yep. And let's let's try one more time before we go if we can yeah. connect with him. Yes. We're still waiting for him to confirm. Let's try it once again. 
And uh, the next one, uh, hopefully, is going to be again with a wildlife photographer because last two times, including Mobin, is more on travel and landscape. So next time is going to be by a wildlife photographer from India. And um, uh, so we shall keep you posted with more information on that tomorrow or day after. It's going to be most likely on 13th of this month. Yeah. I'm and just waiting and for the we, will, we will also have uh, one session on animal trafficking. Yeah. Yeah. So you have the confirmation mostly, of day. Yeah. That will be mostly on 15th. 15th. And uh, yeah. we may have one more story. Once again, um, the most courageous person I have ever come across in my so far life. That is going to happen on uh, 18th of this month. I'm still waiting for his confirmation, but that is going to be, I, I really mean it, the most courageous person I have ever come across in my so far life. So he's a photographer, unbelievable person, a great human. I would love, I mean, I'm going to keep on sharing or talking about it because that is one life which is worth watching. So our idea is to bring in not just good photographers, good humans whose life is definitely worth seeing and knowing more about. Okay, Mobin is again back. <laughs> Hello. Can you see us? Can you hear us? Yeah. So far, <laughs> so good. Yes. Um, so yes, yeah, we have on. few. We we'll yeah, try one more time everybody. answering the question. Oh, uh, is my audio good? Yeah. Yes. So far, yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about taking everybody on a ride like that, but uh, oh, <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> about more applications. Uh, so I think I definitely need to do a lot of update there. So, yeah. So, um, I think the first question that you asked about my. Yeah. Are you, are you there? Uh, can you hear me so far? Yes. 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 Okay, so I think um, I think I have evolved by understanding uh, humanity and the world, and my country more. Um, and I think I have tried to capture a lot of places again and again um, using different lenses uh, by going a different time. If I would go go to a certain place uh, during sunset, I would go again um, during sunrise. Uh, and so I think that's how I have. Uh, probably evolved over the years. That's great. And we have one question from Shaista. Mubin, do you imagine first and yeah. then go try to create a photograph? Yeah. Uh, do you imagine first and then uh, try to so create a... Yeah, yeah. um, okay. So, um, I think, so basically, I think um, I try to do a little bit of both. Uh, you know, photography is all about capturing what's happening in front of you, capturing moments in time. Uh, so, you know, I was showing you some images that I had uh, in my presentation um, that where I have attempted to recreate a lot of things in uh, pop culture. And so that will my, my imagination comes into play using a lot of different pop culture from Star Wars or Harry Potter or something. That's what I imagine it. Um, as far as my books are concerned, Sometimes, um, to books, there's a lot of origin story behind those. For example, when it came to my...
the flag. It's, it's again. Uh, that was actually published. I wrote that book because I wrote. You are again getting disconnected. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm so sorry that you know. Yeah, I feel I so sad I'm... that it's uh, the connection is an issue. Yeah. Uh, we are just waiting for a uh, confirmation message from uh, Mobin uh, to do whether we should try once again or should we call it off. I think it's disconnected. Apologize from our side and Mobin side. <laughs> we'll be sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean the connection is there is nothing which we can do from our side. You know, he he in fact kept two yeah. or three devices uh, with his side. <laughs> he to tried his sure maximum. That, yeah, he tried his maximum, and the best part is uh, we managed to see the full presentation, the Q and A kind of yeah, gone in a wrong way. Well. Yeah, I think he's back again. Yes, right in time. <laughs> <laughs> Happen. I think uh, I think you know if my connection keeps behaving like this, I may need to seek a career in stand-up comedy. You know. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. So before my connection drops again, I want to quickly answer your questions. Um, so I think you talked about how. I'm sorry, Mubin, we cannot hear you. I think your connection is again lost. Um, okay, so let's. <laughs> I think it's time to wrap up. We tried a lot yeah, of time, we tried <laughs> and a lot we'll of time answer the right. questions. We'll answer the questions offline. Uh, offline, yes, that's what Dili we do. Dilip, Dilip is asking me to sing a song so that net will be clear. <laughs> net will be clear, but everyone else will <laughs> run away. <laughs> no, no, Hermi, you can actually sing. If I sing, it is going to be a scene. But if you sing, it Thank is you. still going to be good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So once again, uh, we have two or three amazing sessions this month by three, you know, great photographers and three wonderful people beyond photography. So that's where it's one going second. to be different. Before, before we go, I'm trying one more time. I think it's stuck. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you on behalf of Mobin as well as on behalf of us. It was a technical problem, specifically with internet connection. There was nothing. Definitely we'll we be do. back one more time with Mobin. We have a lot of things, a lot of stories to hear from him, a lot of uh, different perspective. A lot of knowledge that we can take. So yes. he'll be sharing one more session. We'll try to bring him with a good internet connection. He 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 was saying they're already doing the uh, installing the fiber optic cable. So yes. once everything is fine, we'll come back and do one one more session. Yeah, so thank you, you remember everyone for we had the yeah yeah. I mean, thank you, you had the same for participating and uh, listening to his stories. Let's yeah. wind up for now, and we'll yes. be back soon. Thank you. Thank you.